Hello and welcome. This video is to explain the Committee of Sponsoring Organisations most popular visualisation, the COSO Cube. The COSO Cube helps us look at the whole organisation's enterprise risk management model and then to focus on individual parts. Let's start with one definition of enterprise risk management. There are many others. Enterprise risk management is the process of planning, organising, leading and controlling the activities of an organisation in order to minimise the effects of risk on your capital and earnings. Said another way, ERM is a way to plot a path and then to use tools and techniques to stay on that path. While COSO's guidance is non-mandatory, it is highly influential. Many see great benefit in the frameworks as risk management and internal control systems can be assessed and improved. So let's start with our look at the cube. At the top of the cube we have our objectives. Our strategic objectives, our operational objectives, our financial reporting objectives and our compliance objectives. The prominence of financial reporting and compliance reflect the heritage and context in which the frameworks were created. Enron, Worldcom and a host of banks have put these issues in the public and not just corporate conscience. So, turning to the cube, on the front of the cube we have the eight components needed to meet the objectives from the top of the cube. The third and final dimension of the cube cuts the organisation into different levels. This is to focus your mind on each part of the organisation as well as the whole and to stress that each component applies from the global board all the way to the coalface operational units. At the front of the third dimension we have the entity which represents the whole organisation. We then now break that down into each division, business unit and subsidiaries. At the top slice on the front of the cube we have our first component, the internal environment. This is about setting the tone of the organisation. It influences risk appetite, attitudes towards risk management and ethical values. Ultimately, the company's tone is set by the board. A board lacking technical knowledge or experience, diversity or an independent voice is unlikely to set the right tone. The works directors do in board committees can make a significant contribution to tone. Audit and risk committees also have an important role to play here. Going back to the layers of your organisation, it is important to remember the importance of management at division and business unit level. Control mechanisms will only work if operated properly. Management tolerating staff ignoring controls or the emphasis of achievement over results um, against responsible handling of risks are recipes for failure. So moving on to the next layer or component, we have objective setting. The organisation should have a clear vision and the board then sets objectives that support that vision. The vision and the objectives should be consistent with your risk appetite. For the board to set objectives effectively, it needs to be aware of the risks arising if different objectives are pursued. The board also needs to consider risk appetite and take a high level view of how much risk it is willing to accept. The board will consider risk tolerance, that is, the acceptable variation around individual objectives as part of this process. The objectives should cascade through the organisation to division, business unit and subsidiary level, tying back to the business vision. Moving on to our third component, event, event identification. The organisation must identify internal and external events that affect the achievement of its objectives. Negative impacts represent risks. Positive impacts represent opportunities which should feed back into strategy. We need to pay attention to both operational disruption and the dangers to the achievement of strategic objectives. Moving on to the fourth component, risk assessment. The likelihood and impact of risks are assessed as a basis for determining risk management. Managers also need to consider how individual risks interrelate. As well as assessing inherent risk levels, the organisation should assess residual risks left after management actions have been taken. The next and fifth component is risk response. So, in the jargon, management selects appropriate actions 
to align risks with risk tolerance and risk appetite. What that means is that you're choosing a response to manage the risk to a level that's acceptable. The risk response is chosen must be realistic and take into account the cost of responding as well as the impact on risk. An important principle of enterprise risk management is that the risks are not treated in isolation but rather considering the organisation as a whole. Part of the risk response stage will be designing a sound system of internal controls. A mix of controls will be appropriate including preventative and detective controls, manual and automated controls. So moving on to the fifth component which are control activities. Policies and procedures should operate to ensure that risk responses are effective. Once designed, the controls in place need to operate properly. COSO has separate guidance purely on internal controls with its own cube. That guidance includes the wisdom that it's not merely about policy manuals, systems and forms, but people at every level on the organisation that impact on the internal control. The seventh component is information and communication. Information systems should ensure that data is identified, captured and communicated in a format and time frame that enables managers and staff to carry out their responsibilities. The information provided to management needs to be relevant and of appropriate quality. It must cover all of the objectives shown along the top of the cube. There needs to be good communication with staff. Communication is an important way of strengthening the internal environment by embedding risk awareness in staff's thinking. Now moving on to the last component, which is monitoring. The management system should be monitored and modified if necessary, with the principle that unmonitored controls tend to deteriorate over time. It is usual to draw a distinction between regular review and periodic review. Weaknesses should be reported, assessed, and their root cause is corrected. So that takes me to the end of the COSO cube. All that's left is for me to thank the Committee of Sponsoring Organisations for creating this very useful framework and visualisation, and also thanks to Nick Weller of the ACCA. I've based much of this video on one brilliant article by Nick, which I've linked in the comments. Lastly, thank you for spending your time watching this video, and I truly hope you found it helpful. Thank you.